Belgrade, the capital of uh, Serbia, the city that I have yet to explore, haven't seen much, I see that a lot of things are uh, somewhat familiar, some of the things are being built in you, so I guess let's explore it together. I'm right in the very center of uh, Belgrade, close to the old town. Um, I am right next to the railway station. That building looks quite pretty, I would say. It's. I wonder when, whether it was rebuilt. This guy in the back is uh, Stefan Nemanja. He used to be a uh, Grand Prince of Serbia back in the days and uh, this is the monument dedicated to him. Uh, this is right in front of the railway station that I already showed you. I guess this was also clear because you could see what's in the background and uh, pretty, pretty grandiose sculpture in itself and uh, I'm on my way to my hotel be somewhere nearby so I'll guess I'll see you there all right I'm in the room let's do a quick review so I have a, a door I have some coffee stuff then <laughs> I haven't seen that in such a long time there isn't actually mini bar list that I, you know, you know, I could either walk to the supermarket for like five minutes and buy this for at least half the price. That's a remnant of the past for sure. Other than that, yeah, well, I mean, this is, this is, this is my whole room. I have a wonderful view from the outside. Let's check it out. I mean, it's interesting. It's time to explore the city. Here I am in the center of Belgrade, the city that actually, as I learned, yes, I read Wikipedia, is uh, one of the most continuously populated cities in Europe. So for thousands of years it has been around in a certain way. And uh, it's, yeah, still, of course, a beating heart of Serbia, this biggest city. It's kind of looks interesting. So it's a Ministry of Finance, look. Beautiful. And people sitting from downstairs were looking out at me Weirdly, I don't know, maybe I'm weirding out people by recording all this, but at the end of the day, I'm here to show you around and uh, because uh, I don't think that many people travel here. What interesting noticeable here is that um, still many things are in uh, Kyrillic because initially Serbs were using that alphabet and I think now recently they decided to switch to Latin alphabet that's how now most of the advertisement posters is all in uh, Latin way of writing that's what I meant the Serbian language definitely going for some existential questions. And I think in addition to this, Serbia is going through another political and existential question is uh, what way are they going to look? Whether uh, Serbia is joining EU at some point of a time or are they joining BRICS? So. We'll see what people decide. So 
so far Belgrade looks like uh, most of the bigger major post-communist post-soviet cities most of this you know blocky buildings that were cheap to build to be able to quickly put people give them some habitats some place to live there is of course the newer buildings or buildings that were renovated that you know it's like classic early 2000s designs that you can see all over the um, Eastern Europe or at least like that part of Eastern Europe and um, other than that it does feel like I went to Kharkiv or Kiev sort of the whole organization of infrastructure and the rest it uh, doesn't change I think that much from what I've experienced throughout my years of living in my home country. The Serbia finest basketball player. Look at that. It's okay. It's like Red Bull. The tranquility of this city non-existent. Uh, one of the bigger things that shaped the Belgrade was exactly this monument that I was just nearby. Not the monument itself, of course, but what it is, uh, what it is in memory of. And this is in memory of the civilian casualties. Um, there were about 2,000 people who died during the bombardments of Belgrade when NATO did this. Like that thing left a big scar, uh, as I would imagine, in the hearts of most of the Serbs, as well as scar in the, how the city is looking. A lot of uh, buildings were damaged uh, heavily. So yeah, that's... Uh, quite a, a dark page in a story of Belgrade. Here I am at the Republic Square. There is a bunch of nice and prominent buildings, as well as statue of, uh, I suppose, once a leader, the royalty of uh, Serbia. It's the main square, I believe, in Belgrade. It's uh, quite a busy one, but actually it's not that big. I wonder if there is one that's even bigger. It feels like the one that uh, was next to the railway station was a bit more spacious. Uh, but this one is definitely more cozy and has more feeling of the city to it. Second try to get into the Nikola Tesla museum. This house behind me is the museum of Nikola Tesla, which I successfully visited this time. Um, I mean, 
I think it's pretty, pretty interesting. So the museum was started by his nephew. In his will, uh, Nikola Tesla asked his nephew to bring all his stuff from America back to Belgrade, including his ashes. They were also there. And uh, so this museum contains all his inventions, his personal things, and <laughs> technically himself too. So, well, I suppose you all know how great of a genius and inventor Nikola Tesla was. He was definitely ahead of his time and his generosity in terms of bringing so much good things to the humanity weren't really met really well with his sponsors and investors. So, you know, it's like uh, a cruel story of a true genius trying to solve the issues of the humanity but couldn't because uh, capitalists wouldn't allow him to. Clearly, it's also not so black and white because uh, Morgan, Westerhouse, Edison, they were all the ones who were able to realize his inventions and uh, uh, having one of the most epic think, discoveries in terms of the alternating current, something that apparently he came up with since he was studying in Graz in Austria. Uh, so, at the end of the day, he still was able to fulfill many of his inventions. Not all of them were particularly um, useful, as got demonstrated, but I think he was just discovering what is possible, because um, it was the early ages of electricity, and um, he definitely was one of the pioneers and one of the main scientists in this field. But him being such a meaningful figure, it's always hard to pin down who he actually was in terms of which country can claim that he is their national or something. Here next to me is a, a Novi Dvor or a new palace and uh, it is as you can already see by the amount of police and protection that is surrounded it is the seat of the president of Serbia. I guess there has been some tumultuous times uh, politically thus I guess it makes sense and then right on the opposite side is old palace or studied water and this is apparently the city government office they almost identical at least at night how they lit up but other than that um, two gorgeous buildings keep it up and then, of course, to finish the triangle of the most important administrative buildings in Belgrade, there is a parliament, House of Representatives, and you see, also has this Serbian fence. Because what else gonna save the politicians? Oh, the building looks really nice, neoclassical style. That really feels like I am in Austria or something, so kudos to that. I don't know why either municipality is doing everything great, but uh, the city hall is not being protected. Okay, it's the second day of my Serbian adventures. We're still in Belgrade. We're going to explore more of the cities, finally see the waterfront. Uh, the project that pretty much we're building and modernizing the Belgrade, as well as I still want to see the conjunction of the two rivers, Danube and Sava. So, Let's explore. OK, 
Okay, so the building right behind me is the old cooperative bank of Belgrade, which uh, was established at the end of the 19th century. As you can see, this building has been recently renovated and uh, it doesn't serve as a bank anymore. Right now it is a restaurant pretty much. And uh, it is part of the Belgrade waterfront project. However, <laughs> As I was trying to read more about this building and the history of it, I learned that there has been controversy about how uh, it has been renovated because most of the investments were received from the uh, <coughs> United Arab Emirates and uh, some people have some issues with that. Seemingly that a lot of UAE companies decided to in their investments um, into the whole project just in general not necessarily into this building and uh, well now it's a little bit unclear uh, the legal parts of it but other than that it's still gorgeous 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 looking building and I mean it's a true gem for tourists so at the end of the day it's a win for Belgrade I mean I don't necessarily personally have big issues about where this money is coming from. However, I do understand the concerns that by providing this fund, it usually it comes to the price and the concessions or the political things that United Arab Emirates are gaining, we don't really know. However, it does really shape the city in a really nice way. So for example, on the other side, we can see all this newer buildings that are also part of this renovation project and of course here we already see the advertisements for people to buy this whole new apartments i mean 3.2k for a square meter maybe in terms of it being served it's kind of kind of quite expensive still slightly cheaper than in the netherlands but it is the netherlands and we are in a Belgrade, so I guess not that many people could afford uh, buying all these new houses and in this new quarter. And uh, it seems like that they really decide to like these are like 20 store buildings, so I don't know. At the end of the day, <laughs> I hope this investment project will prove to be a success otherwise it's a shame that all these new buildings were built and uh, not that many people could live in there as you can also notice by these posters i'm approaching i'm actually at sava promenade sava is one of the two rivers that belgrade is located in between it's in the conjunction of the Nube and sava and uh, right now so this whole Belgrade waterfront project is on the Savas waterfront. So we almost at the bank of this prominent river. Let's see how it all looks here. As you can see, the embankment of Sava is a pretty nice construction project that uh, has been really pulled off in recent days. You see that it's really modern and uh, this mural, this sitting place area, I don't know. I suppose really in the summer this uh, place is buzzing with people of all sorts and then of course it continues over there. It is flowing through actually free capitals of former Yugoslavian countries. Belgrade, Zagreb and Ljubljana. Here, at the very end that we can approach, you see, we see this bridge over there. And there must be where Sava is flowing into the new. So, this is where we are heading right now. On the other side, we have, I suppose, what is your part of Belgrade. Uh, most of the buildings that are built there seem to be built like post-war. Uh, there are these older blocky buildings. There is. Similarly, nothing too exciting going on there. The buildings are not in the best conditions either. Um, 
I think there has been like a Microsoft headquarters, not headquarters, but like Microsoft Office for Belgrade in here too. But um, yeah, if you, you already sort of can see it from here. There is uh, nothing too much exciting going on on that side, allegedly. I do know that there are a couple of sites that we potentially could explore. But other than that, those uh, blocky planning buildings, this seems like to be something that's already um, was built during the communist era or post-war part. Um, we do see some of those buildings like in the central part, like, like this one, for example, here. Um, however, the Belgrade itself, the structure in the city is much more similar to the older days, like for the older cities where the streets are not as geometrical and uh, that's what makes it feel kind of crispy and nice, like it, it sort of, you know, I was uh, recently in, uh, in LA and uh, the way the Americans plan their cities, it's too extremely geometrical, like it's, it's crazy when you look at the map that everything is like so square and rectangular that you <laughs> feel like you're in some kind of a SimCity simulation where you most of the times built for um, this kind of structures at the end of the day. But the I suppose older part is like of a Belgrade that has been here for a long time has a bit more convoluted interesting street mapping which is, you know, just a common thing for older, older cities. So this is like a border control for river ferries that arrive here to go great on Sava. And this, all these signs, are actual cycling routes around the Europe that starts in Hungary or ends and goes all the way to North Macedonia. So it's Hungary and I suppose this is all Serbia and ends up in the North Macedonia. Pretty cool. So, way to go. So we are approaching the conjunction and on that side, so this bank over there is an actual island that was created by the river conjunction. So this island in the back, it's a great war island and it's called like that because of its significance in some of the sieges of Belgrade. And you can also cycle along Sava. Right behind me, we already approached the park Kalimikdan. This is the park where the Belgrade Fortress is located, as well it is just, I mean, I suppose, the biggest park with the highest density of different sites and uh, let's see what it has to offer. So, it used to be a hammam turned planetarium, but looks like right now it's not really in use. As you can see, that's a really big parking complex with the Belgrade Castle over here.
guests. We are next to the Belgrade fortress and our good old friend Emperor Justinian from Byzantium initially built it back in the third century of our era. This is what we have so far, this is what we can access from this side. For some reason it's closed, uh, there are renovations ongoing over here. But as you can see, people are getting on top of the upper town through there. So we'll try to get and see what is all inside. <laughs> recall my video from Skopje this Kali has a lot of similarities in the way how it was built and even the name I think for the whole park is Kali Muj also starts with Kali meaning that it's Turkish for the fortress and uh, the style of what we can see now is definitely super similar to how the fortresses were built um, back in the days. So far it's like a actually nicely organized park, which, uh, you know, is great by itself. Here we finally can see Isapa, the Great War Island, and the Danube, the second longest river in Europe. It's crazy how many crows are in Belgrade in general. And specifically, you would notice them here. here Just so random next to the church of the Archangel Michael and it's crazy how many kids are there I don't know some kind of a school event or something but they all were brought to church this is so unusual this is not something I even had at my school or something but uh, I guess that's what sort of the flag of Serbia stands for uh, the religion and the royalty. So, supposedly that's why it's still so important. Right now I'm standing next to the Museum of Yugoslavia. I think the trip to Belgrade would have been complete without visiting this place. here are just gifts that uh, were sent to Josip Broz Tito, very respected leader of Yugoslavia at the time. So it's crazy that most of this collection here is just his 
some stuff. A lot of things that we see here is already about the Balkan War and the disarray of Yugoslavia. So in the House of Flowers we see the tomb of uh, Josip Bros Tito and I suppose his wife Jovanka Tito who actually passed away in 2013 and it's all about how much people at the time you know like mourned his death sort of calling him a friend which you know it's like a interesting way to call you leader. So this building actually was used uh, during the rally of youth something that established since uh, 25th of May 1945 and special baton was used every time for this according to the little fact brochure that I found here every third Yugoslavian participated in them uh, to a certain extent so something that has been in tradition for such a long time established of course to commemorate the birthday of Josip Bros Tito I think depending on the outlook and uh, your maybe personal opinion about the events uh, how Yugoslavia has been back in the days I mean clearly there is um, hard to judge based on the, just the information you'll get from the museum how um, crazy things were I think um, there is definitely like a cult of uh, Josef Brostito personality has been there introduced clearly like most of the museum pretty much dedicated to him pretty much it's all stuff uh, that he possessed like gifts sent to him and um, there of course has been a nice interjection uh, with some of the modern artists adding some uh, artworks of theirs too. I do feel despite that there was some criticism of the times that were back there, um, it still feels neutral to even uh, somewhat positive, which is, you know, it just says about the general opinion of people who live in Serbia about those times. So is what it is but at the end of the day it is still a pretty nice and interesting exhibition happening around there and uh, seems like they are planning to expanding it and yeah I'll be looking forward to maybe once I'll be back in Belgrade some years from now be able to go to this museum again and check what new things has been added there. That's about it. Moving on to the next site. So one of the main sites and symbols of the city is the Church of Saint Sava. So Saint Sava was one of the most important saints in Serbian Orthodox Church because he pretty much was the one who established it. And uh, this temple was planned for centuries. The current building that is now is dated 1935. That's when they started to build it and they only finished it almost 70 years later. The project of the temple is people say similar to the one that's in Istanbul or former Constantinople there is now we have the mosque Hagia Sophia old Sofia and Saint Sava church is pretty much the same I 
behind me is what remains of the Yugoslavian Ministry of Defense after the NATO bombings. Most of the rubble was already removed and this is how the remnants of the building is looking out right now. It's one of the things that keep reminding day to day about those events. It's a new day and uh, now it's time to explore the other side of Sava River. We go into the moon, We're gonna see some sights there. I'm going for something that seems like a residential area mainly and that's what I sort of realized the new Belgrade is really all about. There's a lot of these blocky houses uh, so far as I managed going back from the airport. So let's see, there are a few sites that we need to check out. around this main street that I'm walking now. It's called Glavne. So that's one I know. And uh, they're pretty nice old buildings that are uh, maybe yet to be restored. Some of them already are. So yeah, quite a nice walk so far. This is the old tavern White Bear in Zemun. So, the confirmation that I'm actually already here. Out of the interesting things about the moon, so it used to be the capital at some point instead of Belgrade. We're now going to see the tower Zardos in Zemun. It used to be a fortress here, but regardless, we're almost at our destination. Thing is, I hope nobody will let the dogs out because we already heard some. So there it is. That's what's left of it. Tower is all about that. of the city we see that the moon by itself is mainly like yeah, almost like a village it actually has an amazing view just look around here the tower itself is built around 14th 15th century something like this and this is one of the oldest remnants of the moon in itself and as already said, because of its location, you see that it has a great view on the whole valley. You see Belgrade from over here, we see the Danube, we see everything. So for the protection it was extremely important for it to be positioned specifically here. Here we have the remnants of the wall. It used to be here and this watchtower pretty much was garden before. Here we see the other buildings of the new Belgrade. The bus didn't really work out, so now we are walking next to the Danube, to our next spot. It's gonna be a long one. I don't know if you can hear. There is a man dressed up as Santa Claus playing accordion. But. Oh, it's cold enough, so I guess it's almost Christmas. So there's actually a marathon happening right now. 
Kudos to all the people doing that. There is a little park about the medieval past. People can do different activities. There's also so many of those floating cafes, houses and everything here in the noob. Just so far I think the whole bank is in them. Hardcore Balkan training. Okay, you may have seen this building already from the other side. This is the Modern Art Museum where we head into. Okay, so I visited the Museum of Contemporary Art and uh, I think this most of the times it always gives you some food for thought about uh, certain things that maybe you haven't really had time to consider or you know just in general not sure don't have much context or whatever so through art it is a nice way to um, focus on certain things for example found very educational exhibit called war frames that was about the time of the Kosovo war and specifically about the bombings of great horrid pictures from the reports were together with regular tv program this is a little disclaimer message saying that airstrike alarm so that's uh incredibly uncanny to see something like this there is like this two little computers that you can use while checking um, the work more the artist's name is Oren noskovsky and uh, he eventually one of the most prominent contemporary artists of Serbia of the 90s. But in addition to this, there has been some other things. There has been um, Jagda Bujic, the woman who is like also a modern artist. She was weaving a lot of interesting um, works and patterns. And I think uh, pretty much it's two of them um, at the display right now, the Contemporary Museum. I think in the downstairs section there is maybe it also part of the exhibition of Zorn. I'm not sure. Really wonderful building, really well organized, everything is amazing. And of course, I wouldn't have been in Serbia if I wouldn't have tried the famous, I mean, I'm actually not sure it is famous, dessert that they have here called Bananica. Let's see what it's all about. So it's actually a banana flavored marshmallow coated in chocolate. Really good. Amazing. Perfect bread for this. Freshly frying chivapcic. Some onion, pepper. Ten of the time. It's something crazy. I completely ran out of internet and decided to take municipal transport to get to the airport. And I managed, luckily, 
it did give me some chills, but uh, yeah, because I had to change and stuff, and I actually ended up going out on the same bus as the dual man stuff. Yeah. But I made it. That's the most important part.